Good morning all. Today we will discuss about operators in C language. There are lots of operators available but it is divided into different different categories. Basically there are eight categories of operators. The first category is known as a arithmetic operators. In arithmetic operators you can say that the star that is multiplication, division, modulo, plus and minus these are known as a arithmetic operators. You can say that the multiplication, division and modulo has the same priority. It is evaluated from left to right. So whichever come first, it will be evaluated first. Plus and minus are known as a unary operator also because we can use it with the positive and negative. For example, if you say that a minus 10 Right, so it can work with the uh, single operand also. That is the reason why it is known as a unary operator. Unary operator means single operand, and the binary operator means two operand. For example, if you want to multiply number, then you need at least two number. Right, so it is known as a binary operator. But but for the plus and minus, you can say it is a unary. Why? Because uh, we are using the same for the positive and negative sign. Again, the plus and minus has the same priority. It is evaluated from left to right. One more thing that you must need to take care of is what? We cannot use percentage for the float and double data type. But you must need to understand that what is the value of percentage and what is the value of divide. So let me show you the same thing practically. See here, for example, if you have a two numbers like A is equal to 50 and B is equal to, for example, 7. <clears throat> now, if I say A plus B, I will get 57. If I say A into B, then I will get 7 into 5, it will be 350. If I say A minus B, then I will get 43 but you need to take care that is in the divide and modulo suppose if you say is that sir i want the a divided by b it means the 50 divided by 7 so 7 into 7 you will get the 49 so you can say this is your quotient and the quotient is quotient is the result of A divided by B. So, here you will get the value that will be 7. And the remainder will be 1. So, you can say that the remainder is 1. So, if you write here A modulo B, you will get the 1 and this is known as a remainder. So, students, what I suggest you that in which situation we can use divide and modulo. Let me give you a simple example. Suppose, suppose if you have 32, right, and I want to divide it by 5, then I want to find it out the two things. One is quotient and another one is reminder. If you want the quotient, then here you can just divide it, divide the 32 by 5, you will get the 6 into 5, it will be 30. So you can say that, the that is a for example 32 divided by 5 is equal to 6 and 32 modulo by 5 is equal to 2 it means this is known as a reminder so modulo is used to get the reminder while divide is used to get the quotient of any number now suppose if you think that sir I uh, want to use this modulo and divide in the real time application. How we can do this, right? So, let me show you practically. I want to use the divide and modulo both in the real time application. For example, I want to write an algorithm to separate the last and rest of the digit of the given number. For example, suppose if I have a number that is 3896. Now I want to separate out the two different number. 
that is I want a 3, 8, 9 and I want the 6. It means this is the last digit of the number and this is the rest number. I want to divide this two number. It means my output should be like this 3, 8, 9 and 6. Whenever you want the last number, right? So you can say that our system is the decimal system. For example, if you write 1, 2, 3. So our system is decimal and decimal having the base 10. So you can say 10 raised to 0 into 3. So any number raised to 0, the value will be 1. Value will be 1. So 1 into 3, the value will be 3. Now 10 raised to 1 into 2. So 10 raised to 1 is 10. 10 into 2, that will be 20. So plus 20. And here it will be 10 raised to 2. It means it is a power of 2. 10 raised to 0, 10 raised to 1, 10 raised to 2. 10 raised to 2 is 100. 100 into 1, you will get the 100. And that is the reason why we are getting the number like this. That is 100 plus 20 plus 3. It will be 123. So the concept is what? If you want the last number from any number, then you can get it by moduling that particular number. For example, 3896, I want the last digit, then you can write the modulo 10. If I am writing here modulo 10, then I will get the quotient 389 and I will get a 6 reminder. So I want to separate out these two numbers. How we can do this? Very simple. Your number, number, Modulo 10, your number modulo 10 will give you the last digit. So you can say last digit is equal to number modulo by 10. So whenever you write number modulo by 10, you will get the last number. Now I want the rest number. So you can simply write number divided by 10. Whenever you write number divided by 10, here you will get the 389. Right. So this is the simple application that just to separate out the two different numbers. How we can do practically in algorithm? Simple. We can start with the application. We can get the number from the user. If you want the last number, then you can simply write number modulo 10. And if you want the rest number, you can write number divided by 10. And you can simply print both the number that is last digit and rest digit. Now I want to do the same thing in C language. How we can do this? Again, a simple. Suppose if you want to convert the same program into C, then you can get any number from the user. I want to get the number. So what we can write here? M percent number. Now here you need to initialize your number. So I'm just in his, uh, declaring the number as an integer. Now I want to find it out the last number. So I'm just declaring two number over here. That is last digit and rest number. So you can get the last digit by moduling that number by 10. So if you write number modulo 10, you will get the last digit. And if you want the rest number, you can simply write number divided by and once it is done, you can simply print this both number. So I'm just printing the number that is last digit is equal to percentage D. And you can print your last digit. Here you can write this lesson to put the line break. The same thing you can do over here. But instead of last digit, I want the rest digits. So here you can print your number that is rest number and now you can simply be, build and run your application and you will be able to see the value over here. For example, if I am writing here enter any number, so I need to pass any number. For example, I am passing the same number that I demonstrated on the paper that is 3896. So I will get the two number. One is the last digit is a 6 and the rest digit are 3, 8 and 9. So this is the way you can 
develop the application which use the arithmetic operators suppose if you people think that sir i want to use the same thing in the reality how we can use the same thing in the reality uh, can i use the divide and modulo operator in reality yes of course you can use so i have one more example for the same for example i want to write an algorithm which accepts the amount and find i want to find it out how many minimum number of knots is required for rupees of for example 1 2 5 10 20 up to 2000 it means what is my requirement again simple for example suppose if i says that i have i want to withdraw a money i want to withdraw a money from atm it means that i want to withdraw money from atm it means what simple i want to do what for example if i entered the amount that is 6000 then i want a three knots of 2000 i don't want the other knots suppose if i am writing here 6100 then i want three knots of 2000 and one knot of rupees 100 suppose if i am writing here 6500 then I want three knots of 2000 and one knot of not 100 but one knot of 500. It means I want the maximum amount first and then if it is not still feasible then and then I want the other knots starting from rupees 2000, 500, 200, 100, 50, 20, 10, 5, 2, and 1. Suppose if my input is that is 3200, then the output will be what? Again, simple. I need a 1 knot of 2000. I need 1 knot of 2000. I need 2 knots of 500. So it will be 3000. And I need a one knot of rupees 200. So how we can do the same program? Again simple. The same program can be done by applying modulo and divide operator. How? Suppose if your input is 3200 and I want to find it out the data. How we can do? Simple. If you write here 3200 divided by 2000 then you will get the knots. So your quotient right you will get the quotient over here so you can say that n 2000 it means not 2000 is equal to amount suppose this is the amount then amount divided by 2000 so i will get the one not of 2000 but i want to calculate again this number it means i want to process the value based on this 1200 how we can do Again, you can do what? 1200 divided by, now your next knot is of 500. So, 1200 divided by 500, you will get here 200. So, it means that two knots of 500 is required. But how we can pass this 1200 over here? So, simple, if you want a knot of 500, then what we can do? Amount modulo by 2000. So whenever you write amount modulo by 2000, it means you will get the remainder, this 1200. And then you can divide the 500. So you will get the knots of 500. How? It means amount modulo 2000, it will be 1200. 1200 divided by 500, it, will, it means it is two knots. So two knots of 500 will be there. Now I want to find it out how many knots of 200 is required. Again simple, you can do the same task on 200. So 200 divided by 200. So how many knots of 200 is required? 200, ones are 200, the result will be 0. It means one knot of 200 is required. So how we can process same thing? Again easy, you can do amount modulo 2000 
modulo 200. It means amount modulo 2000. Amount is 3200. Modulo 2000 is 1200. Modulo 200. It means 1200. Sorry, I need here modulo 500. Right. So modulo 500, the amount, amount will be, that will be 200. And divided by 200, I will get the knots of 200. You can do the same thing for the all possible knots and you will get the result that whatever you want. Let me show you the same thing on algorithm. Again simple. You can simply write start, enter amount. You will get the amount. Now, N2000, it means the knots of 2000 is required that is divided by 2000. Modulo 2000 divided by 500, you will get the knots of 500. Modulo 2000, modulo 500, divide 200, you will get the knots of 200. The same task you can repeat for each and every knots. And finally, you will get all the knots that you need. Let me show you the same thing practically. For example, I'm just saving this program as demo. Now what I want to do? Simple. I want to get the amount from the user. So how we can proceed with this? Simple. You can first get the amount from the user. So you can write here, printf, enter the amount of money that you want to withdraw. So I'm just declaring here variable m percent amt definitely i need to declare amt i need the number of knots so n2000 and 500 and 200 and 100 and 50 and 20 and 10 and 5 and 2 and n1 it means i need this much of knots how we can do this simple n2000 is equal to amount divided by 2000. So if your amount is greater than 2000, you will get the value. If it is not greater than 2000, you will not get the value over here. And that is what we actually want. Here you can write n500 is equal to amount modulo 2000. It means the remaining amount will be divided by 500. Right? And that is what actually we want. Here you can do the same thing. For example, if it is a 200, then modulo 500 divided 200, right? Suppose if it is a 100, then in case of 100, we can write modulo 2000, modulo 500, modulo 200 and divide 100. So the amount, if it is still available, then and then we will divide it by 10. Now here you can write same thing for the group is 50 knots. If the amount is still remain with the more by doing the modulo 100, then you can divide it by 50. You can do the same thing for the knot 20. If the still rem amount is remained, then you can divide it by 20. If it is not 10, then you can do again the amount is still remained by modulo 20, then you can divide it by 10. And in case of not 5, if still the amount modulo 10 is still there, then you can divide it by 5. And for not 2, we can write here, if the modulo 5 is still there, then divide it by 2. And here, let me write n1. So if modulo 2 is still there, then you can divide it by 1. Now I want to print all the requires not. So you can simply print the message that int f nots 2000. It means 2000 rupees not how many requires. Right? So 2000 is equal to, you can print your variable that is n. 2000s. Here you can just press this lesson. So it will be printed on every new line. So simple. N500, N100, N50, N200, N50, 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 N
500, 100, sorry, here I need 200, 100, 50, 20, then 10, then I need a N5, and I need a N2, and I need, that is at N1. Here you can just print the value, that is 500 knots, 200 knots, 100 knots, here you can mention 50 knots, 20 knots, 10 knots, 5 knots, 2 knots, and rupees 1 knot is equal to, right? You can simply print the value. Once you print all these things, now what happened? It will print the value even if the value is 0. For example, if I write the amount 2000, and it, will, it will definitely print the 2000 is equal to 1 and it will print the rest amount in 0. So how we can process the same thing? Let me show you over here that suppose I am entering the amount over here that is for example 2000. Then you can see that the value that is available over here that is 2000 I need to print here. So I need to write percentage D because it is an integer value. So you can write here integer. So once you write the digit, every digit will be printed over here. Let me execute the application again. 2000. Now here see what happened. This is the notation of Java. So I just need to write here comma. So if you write here comma, then it will give you the proper result. So let me compile and run again. 2000. See here, 2000 not is 1 <clears throat> and rest are 0. Suppose if I am entering the amount that is 6000, then I will get 3 knots of 2000. Suppose if I am running again and if amount is 6100, then the 3 knots of 2000 and 1 knot of 100. Here I what I want to do, I don't want to print the data if the value is 0. Right. I don't want to print the data if value is 0. Then you can simply write one condition over here. If not 2000 not equal to 0, then do this. If not 2000 not equal to 0, then do this. It means if the not 2000 is not available, uh, then I don't want to print. If the not 2000 is equal to 0, then I don't want to print. If the not 2000 not equal to 0, it means the if it is required, then and then print this. Right. Here you can write if the same condition, but the value will be changed. If not 200 is not equal to 0, then do this. If not 100 not equal to 0, then do this. If not, that is your 50 not equal to 0 then do this if if condition is still remain I just I'm just explaining the same thing practically in real time so that is the reason why I'm using the same thing if condition is still pending and 10 not equal to 0 then do this <clears throat> if n 5 not equal to 0 then do this if n not equal to 0 then do this and if n1 not equal to 0 then do this it means what see if the if this value is not 0 it means there is something some value is there and if value is there then and then it is required for example if I am writing here 2000 it will say that 2000 rupees 1 that's it so you need a 2000 uh, rupees 2000 knots you need a 1 knot but if I am writing 2500, then it will say that you need a rupees 2000, 1 knot, rupees 500, 1 knot. If you write here 2700, then it will say 2000, 1 knot, 500, 1 knot, and 200, 1 knot. If I am writing here 2800, then it will say you need a 1 knot of 2000, 1 500, 1 200, and 1 100. Now if I am writing here 2850, and it will say that you need one knot of each up to rupees 50. If I am writing here 2870, 
then you need each and every not up to rupees 20. Now I'm entering directly the amount that is 2,888. I will get the each rupees not I need that is from 1 to 2,000 and at least one not is required. And one of the good thing is what? Suppose if you are writing here some random amount, then you will get the result and it will be proper. See, two knots of 2000 is required, one knot of 500, so it will be 4500. Then two knots of 20, so it will be 4540. And then two knots of four, two, so it is rupees four, so the amount is 4544. So you develop the application to withdraw the money from ATM, right? And simple we can do by applying the two operators, divide and modulo. So this is all about a arithmetic operator. Now the next operator is relational operator. What is relational operator? Relational operators are, for example, less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal, double equal, and not equal. You can compare the two different variables. It returns the zero if it is false, and it returns the non-zero for the true conditions. So how we can do this? Simple. For example, if you want to check, is five is greater than six? No, 5 is not greater than 6, then it will return the 0. Then you can check, is 5 equal equal 5? Yes, then it returns 1. It means it will return the true if the condition, it means it returns 1 if the condition is true. It returns 0 if the condition is false. You can here use the different example also. Let me show you over here on paper. For example, if I have A is equal to 15 and I have B is equal to 10. Now, if I am writing A greater than B, <coughs> is A is greater than B? No. Then it will return 0. If I say A equal equal B, no. Then also it will return 0 because A and B both values are not same. If you say A not equal to B, yes, then it will return 1. If you say A less than B, yes, A is less than, is, sorry, 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 sorry. I consider here 20. So A equal to 15 and B is equal to 20. Is A is greater than B? No. So it will return 0. Is A equal to equal to B? A and B are same? No. So it will return 0. Is A not equal to B? Yes, A and B are not same. Then it will return 1. Is A is less than B? Yes, A is less than B. Then it will return true. Is A is greater than or equal to B? It means either it is greater than or it is equal. No, it is not even greater than or not, not even it is equal. So it will return 0. And if you say A less than or equal to B, it means either it should be less than, yes it is less than, or if it is equal then less than or equal will return 1. So here in this case, you can say A is not greater than B. That's why I'm getting 0. A is not equal to B is true. That's why I'm getting 1. A and B both are not same. So I'm getting 0. A is less than B. Yes. So I'm getting 1. A is greater than or equal to B. No. So I'm getting 0. Is A is less than or equal to B. Yes. So I'm getting 0. One. So this is what a relational operator is. We will explore the same thing in detail whenever we see if condition. Now logical and. Logical operators in which there are three operators are there. Logical and, logical or and logical not. Logical and means this operator evaluates the Boolean expression from left to right. If all the conditions are true then and then it will evaluate to true. For example, you can say both side of the operator must evaluate to true. Logical operator produces zero if one of the entire expression is false. So if any condition is false, 
your double M person will give you false. For example, is 6 is greater than 5? Yes. Then it will check the another condition. Is 10 equal to equal to 10? Yes. If both condition are true, then and then it will return true. If any of this condition is false, then it will return the 0. It returns 1 for true and 0 for false. Another operator is that or. Or means it returns true if any of the condition is true. It means at least one condition is required to be true. It returns false if all the conditions are false. If all the conditions are false, then your all will return or will return false. Simple remember. M person evaluates to true if all conditions are true. Or evaluates to false if and only if all conditions are false. It means if at least one condition is true, your OR will be true. If at least one condition is false, your M% person will be false. So you need to remember that if all the conditions are true, then M% person will return true. If all conditions are false, then OR will return false. So you need to remember the truth table that if both conditions are false, then your M person will return false. Your OR will also return false. If one condition is true, then but at least one, if, if all the conditions are not true, then AND will return false. OR will return 1. If any condition is false, then also and will return false or will return 1. Why? Because 1 is true. If both the conditions are true, then, then and then your M person will be true. Your or will be also evaluated to true because at least one condition is required to be true. This is what your and and or operator is. For example, see, 5 greater than 6 is not correct, but 10 greater than 8 is correct and that is the reason why it returns the true. But if you put here double M person over here, then it will return false. Why? Because 5 greater than 6 is false. So you just need to understand what M person evaluates to true if all the conditions are true or will evaluate to false if all the conditions are false. Not returns the complement of the value. For example, it is a unary operator. For example, if it is a false, then it will convert it into true. If it is a true, then it will convert into false. So if its operand is non-zero, then it returns zero. Otherwise, it returns one. What it means? It means it is a non-zero will be converted into zero. And if it is a zero, then it will be converted into one. This is what your logical operators. We will explore the logical operators and relational operator both at the time of the condition that is at the time of the control statement. Now assignment operator. This is the wonderful operator. You can assign the value to the variable. For example, if you are simply writing a statement like this, integer a is equal to 50, then you can say that the 50 is assigned to variable a. So this operator is known as an assignment operator, right? So 50 will be assigned to variable A. So this operator is known as an assignment operator. It has the lowest priority. It means, suppose if you are writing here integer C is equal to, for example, I am declaring here integer A, B and C. And for example, A equal to 10, B equal to 20, C equal to 0. I am writing here C equal to A plus B. Then this A plus B will be done first. And then and then at the last this equal to will be done. It means equal to has the lowest priority. It will be run at last. It evaluates from left to right. So from left to right your equal to operator will be executed. Equal assignment means equal operator. 
there is a plus equal to assignment is also there. For example, suppose if you want to do, I have a number, number equal to 10 and I have another number that is number 2 equal to 20. Now I want to do what? Number equal to number plus number 2. It means I want to make the addition of this 2. Number is equal to 10. Number 2 is equal to 20. I want to make a 10 plus 20 is equal to number 30. It means I want to assign the same value to the number by applying this. So you can convert the same statement into sort and operators. You can do like this. Number plus is equal to number 2. So it is equivalent to number equal to number plus. So it is a simple sort and operators like this. You can do like this plus equal. <clears throat> so it is like a variable equal to variable plus. The same you can do here variable minus equal to value, variable multiply equal to value, variable divide equal to value and variable modulo equal to value. So same you can do using the relational sorry using the assignment operator. So we covered the four operators increment decrement operator. Increment decrement operator means what you can use the plus plus and minus minus. You can use the post increment and pre increment. You can use the post decrement and pre decrement. So it is used for the increase or decrease the value of the variable. It is again a unary operator. What is the meaning of unary? No two operand is required. One operand is sufficient. For example, if you want to do a multiplication of any number, then you need a 10 into 2. It means you need a two numbers to do the multiplication. If you want to do a division of any number, you need a two numbers. But unary operator means you don't need a two numbers. You can directly write like this a plus plus. It means it is unary operator. No two operand is required. One operand is sufficient to do this. How this increment decrement operator is working on? Let me show you practical in C. This is again a simple thing. Let me save this program as and that is demo. So students increment decrement there are four varieties over here. The one is post increment and pre increment. Post increment means variable and then plus plus. Pre increment means plus plus a. There is a post decrement is there. So a minus minus and pre decrement is there. For example, minus minus a. What is the difference? Simple. Suppose if I am writing here, that is a is equal to 20 and I am writing here b is equal to 0. Suppose I am writing here b is equal to a plus plus. Then what happened? It will definitely do the post increment. So a value of a will become the 21, but the value of b will be 20. Why? Because this is post increment. So value of a will be assigned to b first. So b equal to 20 and a will become the 21. So after this statement, if you print, you will get the b equal to 20 and a equal to 21. But suppose if you are doing the same thing over here like this, b equal to plus plus a. Then at the end, you will get the b equal to 21 as well as a equal to 21. Let me show you the same thing practically. For example, integer a is equal to 20, b equal to 0. Now I am doing what? b is equal to a plus plus. And I am printing the value of a and b. a will definitely become the 21, but b will be still 20. So here you will be able to see that the value of a is 21, but the b becomes the 20. Now what is the difference? If instead of this statement, if I am writing like this, b equal to plus plus a, then it will be increment and as a result the value of a and b both will be same now sometimes what happen in the competitive exam the peoples are asking for the multiple increment and decrement at the same time so how we can manage this 
again it is a simple you can write here for example a plus 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 a plus minus minus a plus a minus minus right now i want to check what will be the value of a and b at the last simple here you can see that it is a plus plus it means it will be post increment so value of a will be 20 over here now here you can check that the value of a will be post increment so it will be 21 over here and now it is pre increment so it will be 20 now here if you come it is a pre decrement so value of a will become the 21 over here now if you print over here then value of a will be 21 but if you print here then the value of a will become the 20 why because it is a post decrement so after this statement the value of a will become the 20 so as a result i will get the value of a is 20 and value of b will be the sum of all this so i will get the 21 plus 21 42 42 plus 2 it will be 44 plus 20 so it will be 64 plus 20 it will be 84 so now you can just execute your application and you can check Yes, it is 20 and 84. So simply you can use increment and decrement operator over here. We will explore the same thing whenever we will discuss the different concepts. So it, both are unary operator, post increment, pre increment, post decrement, pre decrement. Now the sixth variety of the operator is known as a conditional operators. What is conditional operator? It is also known as a question column operator. It means I want to ask a condition. If I want to ask a question, if it is true, then what you want to do? If it is false, then what you want to do? It is also known as a ternary operator. The syntax of the same is you can write the expression question mark. This is your true part and this is your false part. Expression one is the condition evaluates first if that condition is true then it returns expression 2 if the condition is false then it returns the expression 3 this is what the condition conditional operator is let me show you over here for example if i have a equal to 10 b equal to 20 now i want to check it which number is the maximum Right. So, I want to find it out the maximum of two numbers from the given two numbers. So, definitely I will ask to the user that enter any two numbers. So, I want to get the two numbers from the user percentage D, percentage D, M percent A, M percent B. Instead of A and B, you can write number one, number two if it is required. Now, I want to check which number is maximum. So here you can write the expression. How we can write the expression? A greater than B and then question mark. If A is greater than B, then assign the A. If A is not greater than B, then assign a B. To which variable? Here you can define your variable max. So max is equal to A greater than B. And at last, you can simply print maximum is equal to percentage d and you can print your maximum variable so again it is a very simple task you just need to pass a two number for example 32 and 43 i will get that maximum is 43 if i pass the first number is bigger for example 54 and 33 then the maximum is 54 so what it is doing it is checking for the number if the first number is greater than the second number then the first number is maximum if first number is not greater than the second number then the second number is maximum so if i am passing here 44 and 56 then the maximum is 56 so this type of condition is known as a question column you can say simple the first condition so it is a relational operator if it is true then this will be executed if it is false then the colon portion will be
executed. This is what we see in C. Question column operator. This is the syntax. Expression 1 is the condition. If the condition is true, then it executes expression 2. If the condition is false, then it executes expression 3. This is the simple example.